And we want to look at the four prophetic activities of Hanam. The four prophetic activities of Hanam. There is a famous quote that was written by um, a communist and he said, Give me your child when he's one year old and after seven years I will deliver a communist. Give me your child when he's one year old and after seven years I will deliver a communist. That means that children are formed to be who they are supposed to be. Children are formed to be who they are supposed to be. Hannah was the wife of Elikana, who, had, who was also married to Penina. And when you look at the dealings of scripture, we discover that Hannah was barren, but Penina had children. And one of the things that I came to discover is that there was a culture that was upon Elkanah. And the culture was every year he went to Shiloh to sacrifice. Now, when I look at the Levitical laws, there is nowhere where there was a demand for a man to go and sacrifice in Shiloh. Because the sacrifice is a language of revelation. It takes revelation for a man to sacrifice. But the second thing when I look at Elikana, he was a priest of his house. Because the sacrifice of Shiloh was a sacrifice connected to his house. And one of the things that need to come back in the house of God is what I call the priestly order. The priestly order. Because the mandate of worship and sacrifice in a household is the mandate of a man. That is the order. And we need to understand we live in a territory that is configured in that order. You never see women under the mountain sacrificing. Meaning that if man does not rise, another priesthood might take over. It is a pattern in the spirit. I, have, I know we have never heard our mothers pray. I mean our fathers pray. Many times intercessions and priestly activities have been delegated to women. It is error. Hallelujah. And it is not about the longevity of prayer for men. It is about the understanding of their office in the prayer. And there is only one thing that robs a man authority on the altar of prayer. One thing written in scripture, especially a married man, when he does not honor the wife of his youth. Malachi, the Bible says, chapter 2, you have filled my tears, my, my altar with tears, but I shall not respond. Why? Because you have not honored the wife of your youth. When I look at the attack of marriages, it's not just an attack is an attack of a priestly order. Because a man cannot do business on the altar when the tears of her wife have ascended before his tears. Oh, Jesus. Can I even tell you there are some battles our children face not because they are meant to face them, because the priestly ordinance has been aborted. So the devil has a leeway to attack our children. Some of them even with diseases. That's why marriages must work. Marriage is a covenant. And the order of that covenant, when your wife is not by your side, your priestly ministry on the altar is a man is affected. Is affected. These are biblical patterns. Hallelujah. And we need to be serious with them because if men don't arise, then there will be a, a disorder of priesthood in the spirit. And we are going to lose a generation. Please allow me to tell you, we can take our schools, our children to the best of schools. But when you look at effective men, there was an altar that backed them up. Man is good. But there are four prophetic things that Hannah did. And these will save a generation. So Elkanah understood he was a wise man. He raised his family by the system of altars and sacrifice. 
That is how the man raised his family. By the system of altars and sacrifice. Now, it is the role of a priest to make sure there is fire on the altar. But it is the role of men to make sure there is sacrifice on the altar. That's why the altar you connect with matters. Because some altars have ashes instead of fire. Hallelujah. And an altar without a sacrifice is a monument. What gives an altar power is the sacrifice. What strengthens an altar is the frequency of sacrifice. These are spiritual ordinances. An altar without a sacrifice is a monument. God is not moved by fire. God is moved by the smell that comes from what the altar consumes. Without any Levitical order, Elkanah has a revelation. That I can only raise my family by the system of altars and sacrifice. And every year the man went to Shiloh. The name Shiloh means the place of rest. And Elikanah means God has possessed. Meaning that every year he raised a sacrifice at a place of rest. It was in these frequent visits that Hannah received a visitation. Hallelujah. It was in these frequent visits that Hannah received a visitation. You see the same order of altar in Job chapter number 1 and verse 5. The Bible says, and Job, after the children came from a certain event, Job raised an altar and sacrificed and repented on behalf of his children. Lest they had messed up. Hallelujah. Yeah, the Bible says, so it was when the days of feasting had run their course that Job will send and sanctify them and he will rise early in the morning and offer burnt offering according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have seen. The man was a priest and an intercessor of his family. Hallelujah. And this is what preserves. Someone say the problem of Job is that he never raised a sacrifice for his wife. And that's why the only thing that was not restored was his wife. And the wife became a gate of opposition when he was going through affliction. That is the only place he failed. But for the children, he raised a sacrifice. Men, are you in the house? There is a mandate upon our life to take priestly good seriously. Because if we don't rise by the order of priesthood, women cannot take our place. We can delegate many things. We can delegate school fees. We can delegate rent. But you can never delegate priesthood. That's one thing. And that's a disorder in the spirit. I remember one day my dad was asked by my mom to pray for us. And it was the shortest prayer but the most powerful prayer. I was just newly married. And my mom said, And my dad prayed one minute prayer. He said, Tony, namukewako, mimi ni mawabariki. I cried. My mom prays for one hour. And I've never cried. Because my mom will begin from Old Testament, mention all the prophets, and Moses being the favorite and the Red Sea. And she must come to New Testament, mention Paul and Silas, and must mention the jail. One hour. My dad prayed for one minute. But uh, by revelation, I knew an office has endorsed something. Things began to shift. You know, men don't pray out of emotions. We pray out of office. It's an office. That's why you can wake up and tell your children, I bless you. Even the devil knows an office has spoken. So you can imagine when the priests are quiet. And them that are supposed to speak are not speaking. But another office is speaking. And there is disorder in the spirit. That's why some of our children are suffering. It was the first prayer I had my father pray. And it was the most powerful. I pray that before the end of this service, we'll see men blessing their seed. And release a prophetic utterance. And listen, this office of a priest is not even out of salvation. It's out of ordination. That's why curses prevail. Because when a man speaks, that word comes from an authority. 
A man can die and a generation is affected by the words of a dead man because the words are alive though the man is dead. Huh. And so I pray and I thank the Lord because of Elikana. And so it was in this visit that Hannah found herself in the temple. And she was crying. When you look at the previous scripture, the Bible paints a picture that Benina always provoked Hannah. And what I discovered, if you go to prayer because of being provoked, God will never answer. You see, the prayer of Hannah was, Lord, bless me that Penina may know. The blessings of God are not there to make a statement. They are there to give him glory. And that's why for so long, possibly, there was no answer. Kwa sababu alienda sehemu ya maombi, kwa sababu ya uchungu wa penaina. And I've discovered one of the attacks of intercessors is the status of their hearts when they go to do business with God. If you go because you're offended and tell the Lord, anoint me that they may know, you'll stay there for long. God does not waste resources for personal grudges. <laughs> Anything from heaven has a purpose and a mandate. And that's why now, Penine, I mean, Hannah later realized there is a demand in Zion. And this demand is that God is not just looking for another person. The Lord is in need. The Lord is in need of a minister in the temple. And that's why when you go to the book of 1 Samuel, we are going to read and begin to see some of the things that came out very clearly. The Bible says in beginning from verse 8 of 1 Samuel, Then Elkanah and her husband said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart grieved? I'm not better to you than ten sons. So Hannah rose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant servant a male child then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head the first thing that Hannah did was to covenant with the seed of her womb the first thing that she did we are looking at four things she covenanted with whatever will come in her womb mothers listen to me by the reality of a womb you have authority over what you've given birth to. Some of us, we, were, we have been preserved by the prayers of our mothers. Kitu ambacho kimetueka ni maombi our mama. Some of us. Why? Because when a woman cries by the verdict of what came from a womb, there is a great connection. Those tears begin to navigate the destiny of that person. And because I'm speaking to different audience, some of you are not married. You need to begin to covenant with what you will carry. And say, Lord, whatever we learned is not a waste. I cannot give birth to a drunkard, a thug, a man that has no destiny. Lord, the day a seed will end up in my womb, that child will be great. Listen, the woman began to design the destiny of Samuel before even conception. Kuna maagano watu ufanya na umzao. There's a time I was telling the young people, some of them are not in church because they want. Some of them are in church because their mother covenanted with the womb and said, this one can never be a drunkard. Umejaribu kuenda ba, unakutanga umeenda tu church. Ni covenant inaongea kwa maisha yako. Siwe kuchagua. A woman of wisdom said, Lord, whatever I will deliver is what will deliver me. Hallelujah. And even today, when women you pray, you still have a legal right over what you have delivered. And this is what, you, when you look at this woman, she didn't just make any demand. She said, Lord, I'm not just willing to deliver a son. I want to deliver a Nazarite. Because when you look at the Nazarite, 
There was no one that, the, you, one thing is that a Nazarite was not supposed to be shaved. Neither was a Nazarite supposed to take intoxication or alcohol. Nazarites were a special breed of people. A Nazarite was a person set apart for God by God. And there were two ways to access Nazarite vow. One, you can be born as a Nazarite. Number two, you can grow. And by the laws of Nazarites, you enroll to become a Nazarite. That you have separated your life for God and you are set apart for God. Nazarites were men that were set apart. So number one, you could be born a Nazarite. Number two, you could take the Nazarite vow and decide to live as a Nazarite. And that's why there was a city called the city of Nazarene. It was the city of the Nazarites because Jesus was a Nazarite. And there are only four Nazarites mentioned in the Bible. Samuel, Samson, Jesus, John the Baptist. Only four. Now this is the mystery. For Samson, John, and Jesus, their Nazarite ordinance was prophesied by an angel. For Samuel, the mother was willing to divert that child to become a Nazarite. For Samson, an angel came and said to Manoah and the wife, from today, no intoxication. You are about to deliver a unique child. An angel came and spoke to the father of John and said, you are about to deliver a child. Even that angel went to Mary, but to Samuel, it was Hannah who said, Lord, uh, don't just give me a child. Whatever you give, I shall bring a Nazarite to you. Because I discovered the child you get is a blessing from God. The child you raise is a gift to God. I'll repeat. The child you get is a gift and a blessing from God. But the child you raise is a gift and a blessing to God. Women, are you in the house? Listen. Samuel, destiny of Samuel, ilikuwa kwa mikono ya hana. Alianza kitu ya kwanza na kufanya magano na tumbo yake. Na kusema mungu chochote ni takachozalisha. Lazima kitakuwa ni kitu cha kiungu. Na situ kitu cha kiungu. This one will be a Nazarite. I have the capacity to raise a Nazarite. I have the stature to raise a Nazarite. Huh. This is a serious matter because children are good. But those are destinies. I read a statistics and it made me become crazy. 40 million Kenyans are below the age of 35. 40 million. 40 million Kenyans are below 35. 40 million. That tells you if you are 54, 14 million. Let me speak politically for those who are here. If the 40 million decide to take power, things will change. But those who decide for the 40 million are not below 35. They are above 35. If the 40 million discovered the power of their number, things will move in this land. And you see a generation tempted ideologies by voting Wajakoya. It was experiment. If nothing happens to a generation, one day we will look back at our labors and cry. I saw an American veteran, 95 years old, at the height of LGBTQ. Churches are closing. And the man sat down in tears and said, this is not what we fought for. This is not the America we fought for. Why? Because they never invested in the next generation. What you live in a generation is not churches, but values. Are we ready to raise a seed of a Nazarite? And can I surprise you? Can I speak something here very radical? By 2032, when that generation takes power, some of the things we value will be useless. That is where Europe entered. It's called the age of abundance and the age of what they call, um, you know, non-materialistic age. 
that they don't care what you drive, where you live, and all that. But because we're in a third world country, materialism is our DNA. That's why corruption rules. But I want to tell you, in the next 10 years, another generation is coming, and materialism will not be their DNA. The things people have grabbed and possessed thinking is an inheritance will become useless in one generation. That's why I like what prophet said. We must begin to invest in a generation. We are just a generation away from atheism. We are just a generation away from secular revolution. If nothing happens now, if women cannot covenant with their womb and say, Lord, give me a child, I'll deliver a Nazarite. We are just a generation away. And this is less than 30 years. This LGBTQ will end. It's, it's a generation that has embraced it. Another generation will look at the perversion of the other and wonder how sick were you. The same way we look at how our father sometimes, whatever they valued, and we wonder what made sense in their day. Another generation will come and what we value, they will not value. What a waste. I saw the grandchild of Chris Kirubi who said, I didn't understand my father why he was amassing all this wealth. I said, that one is a potential scatterer. He will look at all the wealth and look at the poor and say, why do we need 100 acres? We can donate this to the poor. The children of Lord Dalamea, they were asked by the grandfather, the father, what do you want? The man has thousands of acres. They said, we just need speed bikes. Buy us speed bikes, do thee. And leave us a few mansions to make rent. The rest of the property, sell and put it in a trustee. Parents, are you listening? We die seeking for a generation. But what <laughs> their values are, are different from what our values are. And it will be such a frustration when we have cathedrals, but nobody to show forth. Raise men and men raise buildings. Somebody say a Nazarite vow. We need to raise a generation separated. Because when I look at this, if the revolution is aligned by kingdom principles, Kenya will become a first world country in less than a generation. Study reveal that by 2050, if we get the right governance, Africa should be lending to America because of the resources we have. We IMF should relocate and we give them money to help the West. But one of the errors of the church, we caught fire. We caught fire. We took the Bible and left academics. So you have fiery fools. The pattern of the missionary was simple. They came with one hand with the Bible, the second hand with skills. They were building hospitals as they were evangelizing. I come from Limuru. It's a shame. We are, the biggest hospital is still a hospital built by colonizers. Some of the national schools are still schools built by colonizers in the name of missionaries. That was the pattern of the church. That in one hand you have the fire, the other hand you have skills. But an African boy, once they get the fire, they drop the skills. And they become apostle evangelist, prophet intercessor, sharpshooters with a suit and a big title and a few bodyguards. We will speak in tongues and speak in cash. We will speak on pulpit and speak in boardrooms. Because the Lord has blessed us. Is someone getting me? Back in the days, the church was not led by fools. That's why they call them reverends. They look for a title, they call them the revered ones. The feared ones. They used to wear white collars to know. They were in the field of philosophy, field of science, field of academia. They were the intellects of the day. A man like Aristotle received a response from St. Thomas of Aquinas. 6,000 pages of philosophical response. To a philosopher of the day, the bias of academics does not teach the response of St. Thomas of Aquinas. We are taught the philosophies of Aristotle. The church was not a combination of fools. It was the mind of the might. That's why the prophecy says, in that time, in that time, Mount Zion will be lifted. And men will say, let us run to Zion. Because people will know Zion is where solution is. Isaiah 2.2. We must begin to raise a generation of Nazarites. Hallelujah. No intoxication. 
They said then the, the number of billions, I think it was 138 billion dollars that was wasted in betting. And the biggest betting companies are in Africa because we are teaching a generation shortcuts. I said there during the youth summit that life will never change its principles to accommodate a generation. A generation must adjust to know life will never change. And the, the, one of the greatest careers in the next 10 years, if nothing changes in Kenya, and also a psychiatrist and a psychologist, the rate of depression is about to increase. Because life will never change. Nature is not taken to a boardroom. Generation bonus, if you will. Yeah, there was something, say, generation one, it's a looter. Hi. What one akunyu ambaka five? Five one akunyu a supu, yeah, mbuzi, alafu wanaanza fresh. Iyo generation, ten years, where to kwa psychiatrist, weka festival ko ofisi na tissue. We need to a therapy. Waonge for two hours. We pay a tissue. We see you tomorrow. And they pay you for telling you their problems. That will be the entry of false preachers. Because they will want to make you believe you are cursed. Nyotayako ilibiwa. Haijaibiwa. Ukienda aluta. Watu walikuwa na jenga. Life will not adjust. That's why there must be a Nazarite. During COVID... Kenya drank more than 75 billion during COVID. In East Africa, we drank 135 billion. Kenya drank 75 billion. We are not a poor nation. Our priorities are off. In short, I put it like this. Young people in Kenya urinated 75 billion in time of a crisis when there was no money. Because alcohol is nothing but urine. Let's talk church. I know we came to Shiloh. But something must shift. Are we together? What can 75 billion do in an investment? But you see, betting and alcohol companies have taken away our generation. So someone must arise and begin to raise a Levitical Nazarite order. A people that are thinking different and seeing life differently. Somebody say, I will covenant with the seed of my womb. Number two, the second thing she did, she named the child. She named the child. Whoever names your child dictates the destiny of that child. She named the child. She named the child. In fact, there was a time prophet were in prayer. And the Lord said, we need to rename the nation from a hustler nation. That contention will cost us. We need to look for a name that carries destiny. Otherwise, I tell you, even those who are in government, they will try projects, nothing will move. There is power in a name. I know this is the nation. Jabez had to contend for his name. Are we together? That is why whoever names you has a lot of authority. One of the spiritual operations that needs to happen is to drop that name, Hustler. And come to a name that carries destiny of a Kenya. Otherwise, you can, let me, the hustler spirit can make you make money, but you have pockets in the hole. You are forever in debt. Okay. Let me stick to scripture. But we said we need to sit in boardrooms and give direction in some matters. Hallelujah. You, you look at some of the philosophies that were there during the Jubilee government. We make America great again. Yes, we can. These are prophecies. They are prophecies. Name gives prophetic identity to a child. A name is not just a name. It's a prophetic identity. As long as Moses was in the house of Pharaoh and not willing to denounce the name, he will still have stayed there. Hebrew 11, 24 to 27. Are we learning something? Are we learning something? Amen. Hebrews 11. The Bible says from 24 to 27. Hebrews. The Bible says, By faith Moses, when he became of age, 
refused to be called the son of he was denying because it was the daughters of Pharaoh that named Moses. The name Moses means Moshe, drawn from the water. When he came to a place of maturity, he contended with that title. And after dealing with that name, he left the palace of Pharaoh and his deliverance assignment began. Jacob had to wrestle with his name. When you read the story of Jacob, you'll be surprised. Because when, when Rebecca was barren, Isaac prayed. And the womb was opened. After the womb was opened, there was contention of the seeds. Rebecca prayed. The Lord said, there are two nations in your womb. But after that, when it came to naming, none of them prayed. They gave them names according to their nature. One was hairy. He was called Esau. The other one came holding the feet of Esau. He was called Jacob, a supplanter. And by that naming, the ordination of Jacob was compromised. The man had to wrestle with that identity. Because all his life, he survived by that identity. He has to cheat his father. Though prophetically, genuinely, he's the one who needs the mantle. But he must lie to the father that is Esau. He gets to Laban and survives by tricks. When he meets God and wrestles the whole night, the Lord asked, he asked the Lord, you can't leave me unless you bless me. And God never gave him cows. The Lord asked him, what is your name? There has been a contention of destiny because of your name. He said, my name is Jacob. He said, from today, your name shall be Israel. Hallelujah. And after there was a change of name, the Lord had to dislocate his joint. Because the man survived by his tricks. And from that time, he was destabilized from his tricks. And now he had to survive by ordination. Somebody say a name. Names are not just names. Names are spiritual references in the spirit. When I say a lion, no one thinks of an elephant. Something comes in your mind. And that's why the Lord had to contend. And later, later, Jacob comes to a place whereby Re Rachel now is with a child. And she's about to enter Bethlehem. And Rachel enters into labor and it's painful. And the nurses tell Rachel, you are with a boy. And Rachel contends and gives birth to a boy. And Rachel names the boy ben or Nin. But Jacob shows up because he knows what a name can do to a man. He says, you are not ben or Nin. You are Benjamin. The name ben or Nin means the child of pain. Some people were named out of circumstance. But the Lord wants you to be named out of prophecy. This child was called the child of pain, Benonin. But when, when, when Jacob came, he said, no, you can't be Benonin. You are Benjamin, the child of my right hand. Many years later, after they sold Joseph, there was a drought. Jacob was old. And he sent the sons to the land of Egypt to look for provision. And when they arrived, Joseph recognized his brothers. And at that time, Jacob was too old for stability. And Jacob, jo Joseph asked and said, I need my brother Benjamin. The name right hand is the place of strength. And so when Benjamin showed up, as I summarized the story, when Benjamin came, Joseph could not hide. He said, I'm one of you. And he said, please go and bring my father. The father would have died out of drought. But Benjamin became the connection between Jacob and Joseph. In that season, Benjamin became the child of his right hand. Because in his old age, his support system was connected by Benjamin. They are children we get in life, but they become the children of our old age pillar. They are called Benjamin. Hallelujah. Si kila mtoto anakuletea machozi. Kuna mtoto Mungu inua 
na katika uzee wako unaweza kujishikilia they are called benjamin and some of them are born through circumstances that are not known because Rachel died but Benjamin was born Benjamin was the one that completed the name Israel because after the 12th child was born it was legal to call Jacob Israel because now a nation was birthed somebody say Benjamin let me speak to the parents not every child will get lost God will always preserve a Benjamin there is always that Benjamin that reconciles the family when Benjamin showed up, there was a family healing. Joseph showed up and said, I forgive you. There is no need for vengeance. There is no need. Whatever you had purpose for evil, the Lord has turned for my good. Every family has a Benjamin. A child born to reconcile the family. And a child that becomes a pillar in the old age of the parents. Hallelujah. May the Lord raise your Benjamin. May the Lord bless you with a Benjamin. And those who are here, may you be the Benjamin of your family. That you shall bring reconciliation. You shall bring healing. You shall be the pillar of your family. My dad always called me an ATM. So one day I was out of the country and he told my mom, ATM yangu imesafiri. So ni pay loan. ATM ikikuja tutaendelea. And I said, you know, I'm who I am because of that old man. Because the amount of money he invested in me and discipline. For when I was in Form 2, my dad was my biggest enemy. I even wrote a diss song. A diss song is a hate song because I wanted to be a rapper. And the first rapper in our town, Alivuta Bangi, Akavaa, Sufriya, Kwa Kichwa, Na Chain, Ya Umbua. Kwa Shingo, Na Kenda, Office, Za Maserikali, Akimba. Then he can be my dad, Nataka Kwanza Kurap. So, image ya rapper, Ni Kuvaa, Sufriya, Kwa Kichwa. My dad said, in this house, unless you have a degree, no rapping. I said, now, and my brother and I were very gifted, so to go to Nagonga Meza to Kitengeneza beats. Because you can't take away passion. You can take away radio, but you can't take away passion. And the first song we composed, Ilikuwa, to all the haters. And hater number one, you are truly my father. And I tell you today, my dad is my best friend. I want to tell all the young people, let your dad be a hater now. One day he will be the best friend. And all the parents, please, please, please allow them to hate you now. They will not understand you, but an old man sees father. An old man sees father. So please, don't, don't tone down. The fact that you don't understand them, don't keep quiet. And don't, one woman told me, my children, my mom ni mwenda wazimu. Akasema, part of me was happy, a part of me was mad. <coughs> because she was mad because alikuwa nsema, all her friends see me as mwenda wazimu. But she was happy because alikuwa najua, hawa ni kiwambia kitu, wanajua nezafanya kikitu. So now they have to be well. So, wana suwe sana. Some of you, you are branded as my mom ni mwenda wazimu. But imesaidew yom toto. One day, she will understand. Iyo wenda wazimu, nilikuwa ina preserve destiny. Are we together? And so, Benjamin became the child. When we begin to look at names, Genesis 5, 28 to 29. Lamech names Noah. And the name Noah means rest. And when Lamech was naming Noah, he prophesied. He said, this is the son that will deliver us from the curse of the land. That's a father naming his child. And whatever name he gave the child became prophecy. Later in Genesis 8, 20, 21, Noah raises an altar and the Lord covenants and said, never again shall I judge man and have lifted my curse from the ground. Lamech never saw the age of Noah, but Lamech raised a prophetic child that became a deliverer of a generation. Martin Luther Jr. stood and said, I have seen the promised land, though I may not enter, but I've seen the promised land. He said, one day America will be ruled by a black president. It was in the height of racism. There are men who have seen destiny and they are raising children for that future. And that's why they cannot allow you to see where they are. You must see where they are going or where they ought to have entered. Sometimes we become the fulfillment of the prophecies that were upon our parents. Hallelujah. And so when we look at this, we realize that 
The Lord was very specific. She named the child. Please, parents, name your children. I'm not talking about physically. Name them in prayer. Speak what you want to see. Speak what you want to see. God had to contend for the name of John. The father wanted to use tradition that because a child is born, he shall be called Zachariah. But John was beginning another order in the spirit. The Lord made sure the man was mute until the day of the naming ceremony to receive the name that God had given the child. Some of us, we need to locate who our children are and begin to name them. You look at your child and say, you are blessed. You are going far. You are not a failure. You are not a mess. You will never bring shame in my door. You are a child of honor. You are Benjamin. You are laughter. You are Isaac. Name them in the spirit. Some of us, it's the prayers that were prayed that began to control our lives. Jabez contended for the name. Please don't allow the world to name your children. The daughters of Pharaoh were willing to raise Pharaoh. The mother had to step in and contend for the seed. It took radicalness for the mother to say no. But the daughters were willing to raise. The world is willing to raise our children. Cartoons have been produced to create ideologies. Many of the cartoons don't talk about heaven. They talk about aliens because they want to doctrinate a generation about what they call extraterrestrial attacks. That there will be nothing like rapture. What will happen is that the world will enter into a battle with aliens. So a child grows watching cartoons and watching spaceships and aliens invading the world. Because they want by the time they step in the world, they, they are already doctrinated to see life in a certain lens. Hallelujah. That's why I love the investment of the Sunday school. You can't take a child to a national school where they go to school from Monday to Friday learning philosophies of men and think two hours of Sunday school will change the thinking of that child. Right now the curriculum has changed. Some of the international schools are teaching coding that at grade 6 a child can develop a website. You can't tell that child about Father Abraham. That child is ripe for mysteries. But you see, the church has become a joke. <laughs> deep. I'm one of them, and so are you. So church looks like a joke. And after a few years, they begin to read some of the literatures, what we call biased history. Christianity let on our zungu. It is called biased history. This thing was not brought by any white man. Christianity was there even in the age of Solomon. In Africa, you look at the contribution of theology. The northern Africa, Tunisia, ancient Alexandria was a hub of African theologians. It's only that the missionaries advanced it. Are we together? Yes. And people like some of the African writers taking us back to what they call African renaissance. Who are we before the colonizers? Some of them are now trying to make it look like a white man religion. This is not a white man religion. This is a pathway of spirituality. Every religion has one destination. Spirituality. When they face the mountain, it is spirituality. When Muslims go to Mecca, it is spirituality. When Indians meditate and enter into a level where they can levitate and open the third eye of the spirit, is spirituality. This is not stories. This is a spiritual manual. And it is the ancient manual because Islam came 600 years after this. And the Quran is a duplicate of this. That is history. It's only that by our level we have not appreciated this is the only book that tells you the origin of evil. Where the devil came from. It tells you the ranks of the demonic. Principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, wickedness in heavenly places. It gives the view the African tradition can never explain the origin of evil. They know there is Warogi and there is Modomo. So they are bad Warogis. Where are they getting that dark power? Where is the source? So this is a manual of spirituality. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we need to come to a place of naming a generation. Prophesying, declaring. Because if we don't do that, the secular world is willing. Number three, Hannah connected the child to an altar. Hannah connected the child to an altar and raised him by the system of sacrifice. Hannah connected the child to an altar and raised him by the system of sacrifice. And I want to believe Elkanah was a rich man because the kind of sacrifice they gave was not for poor people. A bull. When, you, when children are dedicated, is tying their destinies to an altar. And we have demonic dedications. When a child is dedicated, you are tying the destiny of that child to an altar. That's why when a parent cannot speak, sometimes the altar speaks. And that's why there are children dedicated to very strange altars. And no matter how far they go, I had a relative who was caught up in very strange things. Even in America, the altar was speaking. Because distance is not available in the spirit. <laughs> you can take a child to Australia, but there is still an ancient altar speaking on her life. There is a difference between circumcision and dedication in the Judaism culture. Circumcision was to connect them to the covenant of Abraham. But dedication was to connect them to the ordinance of God. Bonas fiwe. Wakati mtoto analeto kwa madabahu, tunamshikanisha na makusudi ya bwana. Are we together? Na ni mungu tu anajua destiny ya watoto wetu. Na ndiyo maana wakati yesu alienda kusakamsaiziwa, hakuna mtu alikuja. Lakini wakati wa dedication, watu wawilu alikuja. Prophetess Hana na Simeon. Na wote wakangalia mtoto, wakasema makusudi. Simeon said, I have seen the deliverance of Israel. Hannah came to see what she was praying for. It's a, it's a lecture for another day. Because it took a woman to labor in prayer for more than 50 years to secure a pathway for the delivery of the Messiah. Because God was abandoning glory and he was coming as a man. That's why an intercessor had to arise and contend for that destiny. That's why the Bible says when they arrived in the temple at that hour also Hannah showed up. There was no SMS but there was a witness in her spirit what I was praying for has arrived. A generation is birthed in the womb of prayer. The day we leave prayer, the devil will take over. Right now we are seeing people opening up mega clubs because cash has died. Someone must contend. Hallelujah. And so the woman raised a sacrifice and decided to raise the child by the system of an altar. It takes revelation to tie your child where I passed, I stood and I covenanted with that altar. And I said, Lord, any child that will be dedicated here will never get lost. By this revelation. That we can begin to make vows. And so, Lord, where we pray, where we do business. Mtotote ya tayi leto kwa imadabahu. Hatunakatatu kwa dedicate na kwa patia majina. Ninakaa see if that is the end of life. No, they can never get lost. And I want to tell you. When you cannot speak, altar speak. Bonas if you And the final thing that happened to, to, to Hannah is that she covered Samuel. She covered Samuel. Let us look at 1 Samuel 2, 18 to 20. 1 Samuel 2, 18 to 20. She covered Samuel. The Bible says, but Samuel ministered before the Lord, even as a child wearing a linen effort. Moreover, his mother used to make him a little 
robe and bring it to him ear by ear when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Look at 20. And Eli will bless Elikana and his wife and say, The Lord give you descendants from this woman for the loan that was given to the Lord. Then they would go to their own home. There was a covering. The difference between Samson and Samuel is covering. Both of them were Nazarite. Let me just, if I can get a lesson, I'll appreciate a lesson. Lesson to Araka. Thank you. Let me, let, me, let me get the two guys in the protocol. You and you and the son of the prophet come. Just come. Let me, let me show you something. And please, this is the battle of the gifted. Just come. Let's assume this big man is Samson. And this young man is Samuel. Both of them have the same office. Nazarite. In fact, this one is more serious. He's a Nazarite by birth. Just look at Judges 13, 24 to 25. And this one is a Nazarite by raising. I've discovered some of the children that portray spiritual gifts are abandoned. So the woman bore a son and called his name Samson. And the child grew. And the Lord blessed him. Look at 25. And the spirit spirit of the Lord began to move upon him at Mahandan between Zorah and Eshtaol. This man Samson began to manifest in the spirit at an early age. There is an assumption when our children know to pray, we don't need to cover them. And we begin to focus on those that don't know how to pray. What we don't know is that they are now exposed and that's why we have people who began well in the Lord, but they never finished well. Because there was no one to cover them. Every year, the mother went and provided a covering over the son. Because the covering of the previous year could not sustain him in the next year. And the next year, the mother will provide another cover. Whatever preserved Joseph was the coat of many colors. The father made a covering over Joseph. And yesterday night the Lord told me the reason why it was of many colors is because the destiny of Joseph mutated in many areas. From a shepherd, he needed a covering of a color. To becoming a servant at Potiphar, he needed a covering that is different from a shepherd. Becoming a prisoner, he needed a covering that is different from a slave of Potiphar. To becoming a prime minister, the covering of a shepherd could not keep him as a prime minister. That's why the father prophetically made a coat of many colors. When the brothers tore that coat, the man was exposed. That covering is what preserved Samuel. Mothers brood over this generation. Don't get tired. We need your covering. Some people ask me, Pastor, how is it to be a young man and a preacher? I said, I know there are people who cover me in prayer. This is not because of knowing how to preach. It takes a woman that can take time to move a cover. Every year she's interceding and take it to the child. Every year because every stage of the child's life needs a new cover. The prayers you made last year will not keep them this year. This year they are going to form one. That's a new territory. Others are going to the university. That's a new territory. There must be another cover. <coughs> Whatever made Samson to die was there was no one to cover him. After the prophecy, the mother delivered and abandoned the child. Whatever made this man to be the leading prophet in the history of Christianity is because there was someone to cover him. And this is what a generation is missing. It's not absence of counsel. We may not understand them, but we can cover them. By covering them, the Holy Spirit will lead them and navigate their paths.
please don't get tired. Don't get tired. Because this is what preserved the man. He was not a special child. He was a child and a special cover. That's why the Bible says that behold how pleasant and good it is when brethren dwell together. It is like the oil flowing from the head to the skirts. One of the things prophet I discovered is that what happens in a church that has a covering, they are disconnected from the head. Now I'm speaking prophetically. You can have an anointed head and a dry body. Because people now disconnect the body from the head. There is no oneness. And when that head lands in another town, miracles happen. Because the Bible says when the oil flows, it flows to the garment, to the skirts. That is the covering. It is Jesus' oil that comes upon an authority. And then the oil flows on the body. Do you remember after they crucified Jesus, they took away his garment? The garment of Jesus was seamless. And the Romans messed up with that covering. What they did not know, the next covering was a glorious covering. I'm speaking prophetically. Because later in Revelation, we see Jesus in his glorified form and with a new covering. And that's why the church can never die because of the covering of Jesus upon the church. I would like to you, it will not die. Rome never killed the church. Many generations have come, even in Europe, we are going back. The church will never die. Glorious days are coming ahead. I wish you can see what the Lord is doing. And Africa, the Lord is preserving us. That is why we must arise and take our place. The days of looking to the West are over. The West are waiting on us to rise. They say by 2050, three out of every two Europeans, one will be a black man. What I know, black people don't leave their altars behind. Nigerians have mastered it. The days of going to America to wash the old are over. We are sending you as a missionary to carry the altar of the living God. Hallelujah! That's why we cannot give in to the demands of LGBTQ. This is our Shiloh. This is our Goshen. Where God is preserving a generation. We cannot allow what has not worked there to come in our generation. We must guard that generation with jealousy because when their families fail, we can teach them by the order of Africa. This is how we live as a man and a woman. This is how we raise Nazarites, children that fear the Lord. This is how a man can be a leading CEO but an intercessor. This is how you can get a president and the wife is an intercessor. Why? The time has come for us to lay the pattern. The time has come for us to reveal to the world the nature that we carry. But Hannah must arise to raise a child that can be separated. Covenant with your womb. Give that child a name. Raise them by the system of altars. And above all, keep on covering that child. Wherever they land, they shall be a sign and a wonder. I feel like prophesying to Africa. Our time is now. Our tomorrow is now. Whatever you saw happening in North Africa, the revolution of kicking away the system that has oppressed us. There is a revolution in the spirit as it is in the natural. So it is in the spiritual. There is a revolution coming to Africa. The days of being a third world country are coming to an end. The days of being looked down upon they are coming to an end. We are the solution that the world is waiting for. They said in Italy during COVID, they used to sell more adult diapers, but in Africa, we have more children diapers. Our population is a threat to the economy of the globe. Let us not just raise children. Let us not just be known by numbers. Let us begin to raise thinkers that a man can create COVID, but there is a thinker in Nanyuki who can come up with the antivirus. The days of praying for some things are over. Hey, the same mind they have to create evil is the same mind we have to create solution. Our time has come. Our time has come. Why? Why? Uh, when, when, when Uganda makes their policy, 
and say we don't need LGBTQ, all the IMF, all these boats withdraw their money. But when Saudi Arabia, when Qatar, when they make the same policy, nobody asks them. Listen, poverty is a curse. That's why we cannot talk in the table of the mighty. When Saudi Africa, when, when Saudi Arabia says, by our religion, we don't permit this matter. By our religion, you can come to Qatar for World Cup, but don't wave that flag. And nothing happens to them. Because the coin has some voice. We are going to speak in tongues and speak in cash. We shall be radical. That if rapture happens in Nanyuki, we know the economy of Nanyuki has sunk. Because them that sustain the economy have entered into glory. The time has come for the church to arise. We will pray, but we will work. A generation must arise that is deep, thinking differently. Is someone getting me? I am looking forward for the day whereby we will be the ones financing the politicians. I am looking forward for the day whereby the kingship will begin to be under the prophetic. I am looking forward by the day when the governor will be an usher, when the MP will be the service leader. Because when we enter the tent, we are all children of a living God. I am looking forward for a day when billionaires of this town will be gathering in a tent like this to tell the Lord, Thank you for what you've done unto us. We are not going to lose a generation. And this is what I believe. There is a generation rising. They don't need to be 40 to be rich. They don't need to be 80 to be rich. There is a generation of young rulers. Them that know the word. They have obeyed the Lord from their childhood. That is the generation I came to raise. Conversations must change. Young rulers. Young rulers. Can we stand up on our feet for two minutes? I don't know if you're there with your child. If you're there, it's a good thing. But I want you for the women in one minute. I want you. You will not perish, sir. Even you, you will not die like Samson. There is a, you are under prophetic covering. Nothing bad can happen over your life. We are just going to make those four prayers in the next two minutes. Are we together? If you are a mother, whether you have a child or not, some of you must speak prophetically to the children you are about to deliver. Women, you will not die because of ulcers, because of a child. Today we are calling our children back to the house of God. While I am about to lose a by the verdict of our wombs, whatever we delivered, the devil cannot attack it. The seed shall tire, both at her. The seed we delivered cannot die, cannot die. Yours is a different seed. I know the sword of Pharaoh is all over, but our generation will not perish. If you're a mother, just lay your hand on your womb and begin to make a covenant with every seed you have ever delivered. Begin to call them. Some of us, our children are no longer in the house of the Lord. Begin to summon them by the verdict of the womb. You never deliver children that are going to end up in destruction. How kuzawa toto apote? How kuzawa toto angamie? How kuzawa toto wakuangamiza na magonjwa? Wakuangamiza na ulcers? Na damu na sukari kupanda? Apana watoto wako atakuwa furaha. Tunaita Isaac. Tunaita Benjamin. Tunaita watoto ambao wataleta heshima katika malango yetu. Somebody begin to covenant. Prophesy. Shadela baradozi ya bala. Rekataya. We came for a family meeting. If you your child is there. Begin to prophesy. Zelabi azabaya. Lako pelataya. Wewe siwa kueko hospitali. Kwa sababu ya depression. Watoto wetu. Hawa tangamia na bangi. Hawa tangamia na matawa ya kulevia. Hawa tangamia na LGBTQ. Hawa tangamia na mambo ya liwa chiliwa. Kizao chambu Jehova. Haki tangamia. Haki tangamia. Haki tangamia. Kizazi changu Jehova. Aki tanga mia Kaya laba shataya Le paria zaba There was a cry in Rama Rachel cried Kesha paya Repele dozia Libara tozia You don't know the cry of a mother That is seeing the child getting lost You don't know the cry of a mother Ambaya naona mtoto Mandiko na sema Na kulikuwa na kilio Rama Rachel alipona Watoto waki wa miangamia Achilia kilio Watoto wetu wa atangamia Our children will not get lost. Even them that look like they are lost, we are calling them back. Some of us, we are preaching, but we never began on the altar. 
kama sio neema ya Mungu na maombi ya wazazi tungekuwa tumekufa lakini nilichukulia Mungu na maombi ya wazazi kutuweka prayer number two. this one is for everybody begin to name your child in the spirit begin to name your child in the spirit speak as an authority prophesy over their life declare whatever you want to see in their lives oh my goodness prophesy don't speak according to where they are speak according to where you want them to be ah saba reba lida dada sepa lia daba begin to prophesy let the doors of the nation open up let the doors of the nation open up they are going to be good children they are the head and not the tail they are above only they have understanding they have victory in the Lord they can never fail their path shines brighter and brighter like the breaking of the dawn my child is blessed my child is a gift from above my child is a solution to the world my child kaba zotalia bara begin to prophesy over that child of course number 3 is what we came to do today Mama said we came also to sacrifice. The sacrifice you'll give in the service tied to the destiny of your family. And say Lord as I come to Shiloh, this is my home. And none of them will ever perish. Tie them, tie their lives. Tie their lives. Some of our children will bring honor to our doors. How and what to let their heshima. And I want to declare from today may the Lord release the grace for us to cover our own. We will not see our own perish. We will rise to cover them. Even the most gifted, we will still pray for them. None of them shall depart from the ways and the house of the Lord. And I declare over Zion city, none of our seed shall fall by the wayside. None of our seed shall be disrupted and attacked by the devil. And I declare even over Kenya, our generation will turn back to the cross and there will be solutions. And even to the leaders on the forefront, them that came for this service, we pray for your families. Sometimes when the devil cannot get you, he goes for your children. He goes for your family. We cover our governor, our senators, our MCAs, our MPs. We declare as you give yourself to serve the nation, may the Lord guard your family. May the Lord shield them. May the Lord protect them. The joy of every father is not even political. It is when the children ascend and when the children become people of significance. I declare over your children they are covered and none of them shall veer off from the ways of the Lord and I declare hi roho ambayo imeachiliwa ya kuangamiza watoto wetu na suicide tunakatana na roho ya kujiangamiza tunakatana na roho ya kujitoa uhai tunakatana na roho ya suicide katika jina la Yesu watoto wetu wataishi na hawatakufa siku zao za usoni zitakuwa ni siku njema Father we give you praise and we give you glory when samson was raised samuel was raised three things were imparted he was a judge he was a prophet he was a priest may you impart the three things that you can raise a judge one that is able to make radical decisions you can raise a priest one that is able to pray for himself and above all you can raise a prophet one that has an insight of what the future holds for them may god bless you may god keep you and prophet once again thank you very much god bless you.